Today, one of the most legendary wide receivers in football history has decided he is stepping away from the game. Yes, I'm talking about Corey Davis. He holds the all-time NCAA record in terms of career receiving yards, was the number five overall pick in his draft class, and was compared to Des Bryant coming out of college. To this day, he's the highest rated receiver to ever come out of the MAC had an insane story from being a two-star recruit with one offer, becoming a guy who had a long NFL career. While he may not have totally lived up to the hype at the number five overall pick, it's hard to say he was totally a bust, and in today's video, I finally get a chance to revisit the career of Corey Davis. We're going to talk about how he went from complete brokenness as a kid to the all-time leader in receiving yards in the FBS, a superstar for Western Michigan, and then what ended up happening to him in the NFL. But before we get started, be sure to leave a like if you're to support today's video, subscribe if you're new and love college football content, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I could cover next. Now let's get started and talk about what happened to Corey Davis. So going back in time, Corey Davis was born in South Chicago and moved to the suburb of Wheaton with his family when he was in kindergarten. He was the second youngest of seven children, and he had very little physical space growing up as they were in a four-bedroom house, so he created his own space by isolating himself from his family and most other people around him. He did always have one outlet and loved one sport though, and that was football. Davis said it was love at first sight, and when he had a chance to play team sports in the youth league in fifth grade, he was pumped to do so. Luckily, he'd have someone to look up to, as his older brother was a guy by the name of Titus Davis. While he wasn't this good then, he eventually became the all-time leading receiver in both touchdowns and yards for Central Michigan, and got a couple cracks at the NFL. Titus said he knew the first time he saw his younger brother play that he would be special. Titus said, quote, I could tell at a young age he was going to be something because he was always involved in the game and just so serious about it. In Pee Wee football, Corey Davis played running back in the summer before his freshman year. He then made a switch to wide receiver because he was too tall to be a running back and he absolutely loved it right away. But while he did love football, he didn't always love his childhood. He knew the streets around his neighborhood in Wheaton, Illinois a little bit too well because he walked into school and to most other places for years. He was a young athlete with a constant smile, but he had no idea where he was going in life, and a lot of times he was just wandering. Davis would have to deal with poverty, sleepless nights, lonesomeness, and at times had to resort to human survival instincts to just make it. He said he had to find money on his own to play youth sports, and his siblings and them often had to put food on the table. He said, quote, There's nights when I made toast, and that was basically dinner for me. He also began to skip class, and it looked like his life was headed in the wrong direction. But he had a wake-up call, and that was because of a couple of factors. He moved in with his football coach when he was in 8th grade, and it hit a low when he got caught trying to steal food one time. From then on, he began to dedicate himself to getting back on the right path, and luckily he'd get some help. Eventually, he put all his time and effort into getting better and better, and became a star receiver for Wheaton Warrenville South High School. But he was by no means a blue chip recruit, and he had a long way to go. Davis was a star athlete, but he had a few things going against him as his grades were poor, and when schools came in for a closer look, they also saw a ton of personal and family problems, which raised multiple red flags, and programs were not willing to gamble with him. He desperately needed a change going into his senior year, as his grades and test scores were bad. His guardian said, quote, I knew it was going to be very tough. We had to get his grade point average almost a full point higher, and we had to double his ACT score to get him eligible for the NCAA. They hired a local tutor person to get it figured out for him, and luckily, it would end up doing enough to work. He would probably be able to make it, but it didn't matter because no FBS schools even wanted him. Davis had one total offer, and that came from Illinois State, a respectable FCS school. Of course, he valued the offer, but he said he wanted more. He made big changes in his personal life and worked way too hard. He spent sometimes 50 to 100 hours a week studying, changing his entire life around, just hoping for a chance. He had to fight and claw, and then for the first time in his life, he got a lucky break. Western Michigan was going to give him a chance. Led by their new head coach, P.J. Fleck, the Broncos had a month to salvage their recruiting class, and Fleck was weary to offer Davis, but his coach convinced Fleck to give him a shot. Fleck said, quote, They said, believe in him, and he'll do it. I have no problem believing in people, and that's what I was all about. Corey would not be eligible right away, but it meant the world to Corey that he was given a chance. His coach said, quote, Recruiting happens so far in advance, and for a coach to wait like that, I think it speaks highly of PJ's ability to see the potential in Corey. In terms of production, I couldn't really find much, but he apparently racked up 45 catches as a senior, had six receiving touchdowns in 2012, and scored three touchdowns on kick or punt returns. According to 24-7 Sports, Davis was a two-star recruit, the number 319 wide receiver, and the 2,422nd best player in the class of 2013. The odds were stacked against him, but after clawing his way to a chance, how would he end up doing in Kalamazoo? Well, let's take a look. When Corey arrived at Western Michigan, Coach Flex saw something special in him right away. At his first practice at Western Michigan, Davis ran a simple slant pattern. 
Flax said, quote, I can still remember that. It was on the left side, and I said to one of the coaches, we've got one. All the difficulty was tough throughout his childhood, but everyone around him and the staff raised him up, and he became one of the top freshman wide receivers in college football that year. During his freshman year, he had a couple of crazy instances, as he'd actually get a chance to play against his brother, and they both wore the number 84 jersey, and it was actually the 84th time that both Western Michigan and Central Michigan met in a game. That is mind-boggling. Davis ended up becoming the seventh MAC freshman of the year for Western Michigan, and as a true freshman, he started all 11 games, finishing with 67 catches for 941 yards and six touchdowns. How did he do after that? Well, he backed it up by becoming a first-team All-MAC selection, as he finished with 78 catches for 1,408 yards and 15 touchdowns. He was top 10 in multiple categories and was the best receiver in the MAC. Going into his junior season, Coach Fleck had come from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and he said he would have had Davis as a third option on any NFL team. That was before his monster season, in which he caught 90 passes for 1,436 yards and 12 touchdowns. That stat line alone probably could have gotten drafted, and he could have gone anywhere from the first to early third round. At a time when dozens of players left early from the draft, Davis didn't have to be convinced to stay. He wanted to. He wanted to complete his degree and wanted to leave there with a backup option and more accomplishment. He also wanted to work on his game as he wanted to add weight and get better for next year's draft. Did he do that? Yes. And a very special season went Western Michigan. In 2016, Davis finished with 97 catches for 1,500 yards and 19 touchdowns. It was a great season, obviously, but that wasn't even the best of it. Against Toledo, he had his seventh catch in the second quarter, and that ran his career total to 5,007 yards. This moved him ahead into first place in all time for FBS yardage, and that put him ahead of Trevor Inslee, who played for Nevada from 1996 to 1999. No one could have predicted what Davis did, as in total, he finished with 5,278 yards, 326 catches, and 52 touchdowns. The two-star recruit ran for the record books and started all 50 games he played in for the Broncos. In 2016, Western Michigan also had their special season, as they finished the year 11-0, and his profile only grew throughout the season more. He established himself as one of the best wideouts in the 2017 draft class, and one AFC North scout said, quote, It wasn't even fair the way he did those corners in that conference. He was like a man amongst boys. Going into the pre-draft process, his comparison were two guys, Brandon Marshall or Des Bryant. Those were great names to be compared to, and Davis had come so far. Seemingly every few years, the MAC produces a huge NFL draft prospect, as since 2000, you had guys like Ben Roethlisberger from Miami, Ohio, Eric Fisher from Central Michigan, and Khalil Mack from Buffalo. Corey Davis was next in line, as he was seen as the best wide receiver in the 2017 NFL Draft. Eventually, despite a late injury, he was taken with a number five overall pick by the Tennessee Titans. They grabbed a great weapon for their young quarterback, Marcus Mariota, and Tennessee obtained the pick after the Jared Goff trade the previous year. At six foot three, Davis did everything. He had the stats, the size, the hands, the route running, and the run after catch ability. One scout after the draft said, quote, they just got a stud, he'll be around for 10 years. It also made history for the MAC Conference, as Randy Moss went 21st overall to the Vikings in 1998, and that was the only other receiver from the MAC to ever be selected in the first round. Davis had unbelievable expectations placed on him as a number five overall pick. His rookie year was littered with injuries and frustration, as he only played in 11 games, finishing with 34 catches for 375 yards and zero touchdowns. In 2018, he would build upon that with 65 catches for 891 yards and four touchdowns before he would regress in 2019. He only had two scores that year, and many were starting to wonder if Corey Davis would ever live up to the height. In 2020, though, he had his best statistical season yet. Yet. He finished with 65 catches for 984 yards and 5 touchdowns. By no means was he a superstar, but he was at least contributing at a high level now. After the 2020 season was over, he decided to leave Tennessee and would sign with the New York Jets. In 2021, he'd play in 9 games, finishing with 492 yards on 59 receptions and 4 touchdowns. Last year in 2022, Davis was about the same, as he had a similar amount of catches for 536 yards and this time only 2 scores. Davis seemingly was a guy who could catch the ball and get open, but he was not making those high-level plays and not scoring touchdowns. That's why some view him as a bust at this point, and with him being drafted at number 5, I can understand why he could be labeled as a bust. There were a couple of other factors that happened in New York though, as he dealt with an injury, and then dealt with something unimaginable, as his older brother Titus actually passed away. This was unbelievably hard on him, and after that injury, he had more time to think about it. I can't help but think that that is part of the reason why he's decided to move on from football, as he announced today that he's stepping away. He said, quote, 
For some time now, I've been contemplating stepping away from the sport of football. This decision has not been easy, and although I am a deep person, I'm a man of few words. I've been searching my heart for what to do, and I feel that stepping away from the game is the best path for me. Some people think it's interesting because the Jets are preparing for a Super Bowl run, and he would have been another great piece to have in that offense. But seemingly, his heart was no longer in the game, and it was time to step away, which I totally respect and think is totally fair. For the entirety of his NFL career, Davis appeared in 78 games with 67 starts, had 273 receptions, had nearly 4,000 receiving yards, and 17 touchdowns. While his career was somewhat underwhelming, and he never had over 1,000 yards or 10 touchdowns, Davis was a dependable weapon, someone who brought the locker room up, and for the most part, stayed healthy. He probably shouldn't have gone number five overall, but I do not consider him a bust. It's crazy that a guy went from a two-star recruit with only one offer to the all-time leader in receiving yards in the FBS. It was even crazier that he was the number one receiver in his draft class and went on to have the kind of career he had. Truly, the odds were stacked against Davis, and he was one of my favorite players during the mid-2010s, so I'm glad I got to do today's video. But what do you guys think? If you're a Titans, Jets, or Western Michigan fan, what do you think of Corey Davis? Do you think that he was a draft bust? And what players should I take a look at next? Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.